Hello, Glamour Ghouls, and welcome to Salem. My best friend and I are on a trip to Salem for her birthday, and I haven't been to Salem in many, many years. I came when I was like 17, and it's so exciting to be back here as an adult. It's very interesting because it's springtime, so everything is um, kind of slower. Things are, you know, a, a, it's not the busy season, so it's kind of cool to get to explore the city it's almost like we have the city to ourselves in a strange way, and it's been very cool. Today is our first day. We're staying in the Daniels house, which is a beautiful historic home. It is the oldest bed and breakfast in the United States. This house was built by shipmakers in the 1600s, and almost everything is original um, to the way that the home was. Obviously, they've painted and spruced and things like that, but it is simply gorgeous in here. The history is amazing. We're like right in the heart of Salem. It's so cool. Let me show you around the room just a little bit. This is the Marion room. And as you can see, there are lots of ship and maritime themed things in here. It's so beautiful. We've kind of got our stuff everywhere, but it's still really, really pretty. <laughs> We spent the majority of our first day just exploring the city and getting the lay of the land. It was very cool because it was foggy and rainy this day, and we pretty much had the city to ourselves. After taking a walk along Artist Row, we came to the Lobster Shanty. This was recommended to us by several locals and it was absolutely delicious. I love that they had a little Ouija board on the wall. You can find little hints of witchcraft all over the city. If you're looking for some delicious lobster or seafood options, I would highly recommend checking this out. The next morning, we headed to the Ugly Mug Diner. This was the most highly suggested place to eat brunch from my Instagram followers, and we really enjoyed our meal. Hey everyone, so it is day two. Um, we had breakfast at the Ugly Mug Cafe, which was really, really great. And thank you to everyone who suggested that. Um, but we started off day two with a kind of a spa day that we had booked. And we booked it at Branch to Root Wellness Center. It's about 10 minutes from our from the Daniels house. I cannot recommend it enough. It was amazing if you're looking for some kind of healing service in Salem, um, definitely check out Branch Root. But I had my first Reiki session <laughs> and um, wow, 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 wow. Um, <laughs> I won't share too, too much here, but that was one of the craziest experiences of my life. Told me a lot of things about myself that she couldn't have possibly known. Uh, was a really really special thing so uh now we're getting ready i got a new dress a new hell bunny dress at modern millie yesterday i really like it and we're gonna get ready and maybe go um try to find some of the hocus pocus filming locations and uh see like house of seven gables the witch house stuff like that my best friend has never been here she hasn't seen some of the historical sites so we're gonna do that and do some photo ops so we're gonna get get cute and go out. Uh, I'll see you in a bit. We started our day at the witch house, which few people know is actually where the judge that presided over the witch trials lived. One of the interesting things about traveling to Salem is that it is this mixture of celebrating the history of witchcraft while also remembering that some really terrible things happened here. So I'm glad there are these opportunities in the 
forms of museums and memorials to commemorate what happened and honor those who died. Right down the street from the witch house is the Ropes Mansion, which many of you might recognize as Allison's house from Hocus Pocus. It was very cool to see it in person. I only wished there were tons of pumpkins outside. We spent the rest of this day checking out some of the shops. I was so excited to see the bewitched statue. This is Emporium 32, which ended up being one of our absolute favorite shops in Salem. It is so cute, so well curated, and the people who own it were some of the most fun and lovely people to chat with. We went in here at least three times while we were in Salem, and I would absolutely go again right now if I could. Then we headed for some lunch at Howling Wolf Taqueria. I won't lie, this was pretty good, but I wouldn't say I would recommend it highly. <laughs> Maybe it was just the food I got, but this was probably the least impressive food we had in Salem. We then went back out on the shopping trail and got to see some very cool businesses, including Vamp Fangs, which is a very cool vampire parlor type shop. They also do events, so if you happen to be there during one of their goth nights or vampire balls, be sure to check that out. Even if their clothes are not your style, Blackcraft Cult is a must stop just to see this giant witch in their new space. She is so ethereal. After a long day of shopping, we headed back to the Daniels house to change for dinner. And we had spotted this very cute Italian place, Bella Verona, not far from our bed and breakfast and decided on a whim to check it out. This ended up being the best dinner we had in Salem. It was absolutely incredible. This place is so cozy, a little almost hole in the wall place, but the man who owns it is from Italy and all the pasta is made in-house, everything was fresh, and it was absolutely delicious. The next day we spent on the wharf, first starting at the witchery for our own broom making session. I truly can't recommend this experience enough. It was so fun and magical, and we made the cutest brooms that we will treasure for years to come. 
After our appointment, we had lunch at Rockefeller's, and I got to meet up with some of my friends from other horror podcasts, Sheree from Nightmare on Fear Street, Kat from Girl That's Scary, and Alma from Nightmare on Fifth Street. It was so good to see them. Then we headed to get some more permanent souvenirs from Salem Ink Tattoo. We had such a wonderful experience at this shop. They're located on the wharf and Mike was so accommodating. Then I had my very first oyster and uh, honestly, I was pleasantly surprised. This is, this is Rain Brian coming at you with Midge Monsters Smash first <laughs> oyster eating. This is Midge Munster diving in. If you are spending the day on the wharf and you're looking for some delicious seafood and sushi, I would highly recommend Finn's. And our final day, we caught up and ate breakfast at Red Sandwich Shop. You have to have breakfast at Red's if you're in Salem. This was some of the best food I've ever had. Then we headed to what ended up being my favorite stop in all of Salem, the Salem Witchboard Museum. I had been so excited about going here and it far surpassed my expectations. John, who runs this place, is so full of knowledge, and he shared so much history with us, including this Stranger Things board, which is supposedly one of the most haunted boards in the museum, even though it was produced in 2017. In fact, the first time I tried to film it, my camera stopped filming and went blurry on the screen, and I couldn't get it to go back to normal for several minutes. For our final evening, we had a nice seafood dinner at Turner's. This was Rain's birthday dinner, so we went a little more upscale and the food was very, very delicious. Then we went for a nightcap at the All Souls Lounge. I absolutely loved the mocktail they made me. This was the Bramble and it was really delicious. And we finished off our last night heading back to our new love, Bella Verona, and having a delicious little lemon sorbet. After saying goodbye to the Daniels house one final time, we headed back to Kansas City. I hope we will get to go back to Salem very soon. So that was my time in Salem. I had such an amazing time. I'm already like itching to go back. We did a lot and yet there was so much more still that we could have done. I know a lot of you were messaging me and were wanting kind of recommendations saying you're going in the fall, wanting to know, you know, where to eat and what to do. I hope that some of this was helpful to you, but also please know I did not by any means hit all the wonderful things that Salem has to offer. And 
I, I hope to get the opportunity to go back again and experience even more. As I mentioned, I wanted to take a brief moment here at the end to show you a, a little miniature Salem Hall. Honestly, I ended up not uh, going as hog wild as I imagined that I might, but I did get a few things that I'm very excited about and I wanted to share. So first off, I had to buy something at Nocturne. I'm really disappointed. I guess I was so enamored with the store when I was there that I didn't film inside. So I'm really bummed that I didn't really get to show y'all the inside of Nocturne. It is stunning. Please go follow their social media. They just had their one year birthday. I think actually today when you're watching this on May 1st is their one year anniversary of being open. Um, so go over to their Instagram and say congratulations to Kimberly and her husband. Such a beautiful shop. So just magical. Um, so I had to make a purchase there and I've been wanting to get a little notebook to journal and keep by my bed. Uh, I've been having a lot of like crazy dreams and I wanted to kind of have a little magical book to have a dream journal in. And so I got this gorgeous cloth bound journal that has this gold embossed spider web on it. I love the color of this, the green and on the spine there, it's a sketchbook and has a really pretty little uh, design down the side, the creeping moon. <laughs> I'm assuming that's the brand. Oh no, the botanist is the brand. So I don't know why that says the creeping moon, but it's beautiful. But this was just something so simple and beautiful, but I thought it really was pretty and magical and very much gave me the, uh, the vibes of shopping at Nocturne. And you all know I can't resist uh, something with a spider web on it. <laughs> at the other shop that I loved so much, Emporium 32, I bought a couple of books. Um, one that I've been wanting to read for some time and I just keep forgetting to place an order for it or something. So when I saw it at their store, I was like, oh, this is a perfect you know, thing for me to get. It's something I already want and I can patron this business. <laughs> so this is a book titled Monster She Wrote, and it's about women who pioneered science fiction and horror. And I know they talk pretty in depth, obviously, about Mary Shelley in this book. So I've been wanting to read this so that I can do a really in-depth episode on Ghoul's Night In about Mary Shelley and her contribution to basically building the genre of science fiction and uh, propelling the monster genre forward. I also thought this was so sweet. They included little book tags that say like from the library of, and they say Emporium 32, Salem, Massachusetts. So you can like stick those in your book and write that they're from your library, which I thought was so cute. So I'm very, very excited to add this to my reading pile. And then the other book I got uh, was kind of an impulse purchase. <laughs> but again, things like this make such a good starting point for me to um, collect information, find stories, do research for the podcast. So this is called Killer Fashion, Poisonous Petticoats, Strangulating Scarves, and Other Deadly Garments Throughout History. And it's just a small little kind of coffee table book. Um, but it's about you know, different ways in which fashion has been deadly. <laughs> and so I'm really excited to dive into this. Uh, I just glanced over it in the store, but it's got, you know, these illustrations too that go with each page. I think they're really fun. And if you've listened to Ghoul's Night In and you listened to the Arsenic Green episode, uh, you know that we love to talk about uh, killer fashion on the pod. So that will be a really fun little read for me as well. And then the remaining purchases I made are in this bag, which is a tote bag, as you can see from the Salem Witchboard Museum, uh, which if you did not already get that from the video, was my absolute favorite place we visited in Salem. I truly can't say enough about it and uh, about John who runs it. If you do make it to the museum and John is there, um, you can't miss him. He's tall, dark hair, glasses, and he is just a ball of energy, first of all. He has so much uh, gumption and excitement and he's so full of incredible knowledge. And if you meet him with the same amount of excitement as he is putting out, he will just like pour information into you. And, and for me, that's one of my great joys in life is to like hear someone else speak really passionately about something they love 
and he just had this incredible plethora of knowledge and was so excited about how excited I was <laughs> to receive it. And so I ended up going back twice or three times. I don't know, I went back several times uh, just because I, I couldn't get enough of the energy of that place. I loved it. So that is where I spent the majority of my uh, souvenir money because I wanted to remember that experience. So I got this tote bag and inside, first just the cutest little, I love pennants. I love vintage style pennants. And so they had a little Salem Witch Board Museum one and I thought that was so cute. I'm gonna hang that um, above my desk set up. I also had to get this little sticker because it had the Norman Rockwell uh, painting of the couple using the Ouija board, which if you've listened to, again, <laughs> Ghouls Night in Pod, the second episode of the pod ever, we talk about this Norman Rockwell painting and it's one of my favorite episodes of the podcast to date, uh, episode two. And then these, I love these. I think y'all know, I love planchettes. I think they're so beautiful. And so they had souvenir planchettes uh, for the museum specifically, but I love the like vintagey packaging. Like just everything about this looks like it was bought in like the early 60s or late 50s and I just adore it. So this one glows in the dark and is white and then obviously the orange. I thought this one I'll probably keep in the studio since the white goes with everything and then this one I'll probably put out with my Halloween stuff. Okay so two last things and these were kind of my big ticket items that I bought. I knew Whatever I bought in Salem, I wanted it to have a significance to being purchased in Salem. And something I actually do not personally own is a Ouija board. I mean, you all know I made one back in February, but I have never purchased one. And at the museum, they had the Halloween 3 season of the Witch Board from Trick or Treat Studios. I almost bought this when it came out. <laughs> uh, and I don't know why I decided against it, but John was talking about it and his friend is actually the person who designed it. And it was just cool to hear him talk about it. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna get it. He also told me that they were originally going to do another run of these and now it's seeming that they are not going to. So I thought, well, in that case, it's a collector's item and I should get one. <laughs> he also shared with me, which I thought was very cute, that the guy who designed this, these are his kiddos on the back. <laughs> But the packaging is very cool. This is like a magnetic close top. And when you open it, the planchette is mounted inside the roof on top of the box there. And then, and there is the board. Isn't that packaging so cute? I remember the first time I saw this board online thinking, oh my gosh, that would be such a beautiful display piece because even if you're not a fan of the Halloween franchise, which I am, but this is just such a like Halloween-y <laughs> board. It's so trick or treaty um, and I love it. I'm so excited to have it. I love that it's orange. <laughs> Makes me really happy. I love the little candies in the corner and the art of the masks from the film. Uh, by the way, this is designed by Sam First. F-U-R-S-T is the name of the person who designed this board for Trick or Treat Studios. And see like at the bottom it says trick and treat. I just think it's so like perfectly, perfectly Halloween-y. I love it. So baby's first Ouija board. <laughs> I'm very, very happy. And then the last thing I have to show you is probably the thing I'm most excited about. As you saw in the video, Rain and I went to the witchery and made our own brooms, but in that clip, you didn't really get to see the finished product. So I thought I would share that with you. Uh, here is the broom that I made. Let's see. Maybe like that, is that the best way to show it? <laughs> so tall. I absolutely loved this experience. If you're planning a trip to Salem with friends or, you know, whoever, uh, I highly recommend making an appointment at the witchery to make your own broom. It doesn't have to be a full size broom. They have small ones or medium sized ones. You put in a deposit ahead of time when you book the appointment and then that gets put towards the cost of your broom. So whatever 
know, size broom, you get that amount gets taken off. But that includes a good amount of the like add-ins in the broom, and then you can pay extra if you want to add um, additional things, which I added a couple additional things. But I, I love this so much. I feel like it just looks like Halloween in a broom and I thought this like coloration looked so much like my hair with the streaks in it. Even the person at the witchery was like, that looks like your hair. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that was my, my goal. And I'll show you, it's got some little charms on it as well. So there is a little raven skull and of course a, I don't know if you can see it, but a spider web. <laughs> And then this little cage has a piece of carnelian in it. And then this is mugwort in this bottle. So this is definitely my favorite thing I brought back. Just getting to make my own broom in Salem was very, very cool. The people at the witchery are so kind and so wonderful to work with. It was just a really lovely experience all around. And there's a UPS store you can walk to that has boxes for their brooms so we were able to ship these home we didn't have to carry them on the plane with us which was really really nice so i i truly can't recommend this experience enough so that is my little salem haul i really hope you all enjoyed this vlog i love making travel vlogs it gives me kind of a, a an opportunity to revisit my travels from a different perspective and it's always really fun to make these videos and share them with you if you're planning an upcoming trip to salem i hope this was helpful uh, if you are someone who lives in salem or frequents salem please feel free to down in the comments uh, highlight any of these businesses or highlight things that i missed so that uh, those looking to this video to plan their own trips could get additional tips and tricks down in the comment section. I would love to just chat more about this, especially since I'm planning to go back soon as well. So definitely let me know what I missed that I, I can't miss next time. It feels really good to be back. I was traveling for a full two weeks, which was absolutely amazing, but it feels so good to be sitting here and talking to you all on the camera again. We are officially halfway to Halloween now, which is very exciting. I will be putting up a halfway to Halloween video next week, and we are gonna start our plans for the Halloween season and figuring out what we're going to do for house decor and other projects that I have planned. I'm very excited. If you are a member of my Patreon, we just did a little halfway to Halloween celebration and started testing some techniques for my yard display this year. Uh, if you are not already a member, you can check that out in the description box below. I will be doing additional videos, not just the monthly lives throughout, basically now through Halloween as we prep some of these large-scale projects. So if you enjoy my content and you would like additional content from me, be sure to check that out as well. And as always, if you're not already, please consider subscribing to the channel before you leave today. We would love to have you as a part of our Glamour Ghoul gang. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And until next time, keep it campy, kooky, glamorous, and spooky. Bye! <laughs>